All right, uh, here is partially what uh, is driving up the price of oil. Radio News, I'm Richard Stewart. President Obama says he will not hesitate to use force when it is necessary to defend the United States and its interests. Yeah, that's good. Just, you know, keep throwing that stuff out there. And that is surely going to bring the price of oil down so we're not all paying $4 a gallon, as we all are already. He told a pro-Israel group on Sunday he wants to allow time for sanctions to work on Iran. Obama will meet with Israel's Prime Minister Monday at the White House. Obama says the U.S. will be there to protect Israel from Iran. A nuclear-armed Iran is completely counter to Israel's security interests. But it is also counter to the national security interests of the United States. But what about a country of our uh, Iran that doesn't refine oil, that produces oil, that needs to power its country, uh, how about they produce some uh, react? Not that anybody should be producing any nuclear material, because uh, enough is enough. Have we seen uh, the devastating effects of Fukushima that nobody's talking about in America, but everybody knows around the world what's going on. Um, Enough is enough, people. Uh, we don't need these nukes, but we sure as hell don't need our president sitting there going, oh, well, we're already sanctioning everything enough as it is, and you are already got your tension high in uh, the Strait of Hormuz. Here we go. Coast to coast, I'm George Nori. This book, The Harbinger, is rapidly the becoming Harbinger. the number one book on Amazon.com. It is climbing the ladder. Jonathan Kahn, of course, known for his uncovering of ancient mysteries and revealing very startling significance to our day, to our age. His teachings and messages are broadcast daily throughout the United States and the world. He is a spiritual leader of the Jerusalem Center in Wayne, New Jersey. He has written this book called The Harbinger, and he's on Coast to Coast. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Hi, George. Good to be here. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, scary and frightening at one point, uh, is, as I was looking at this, tell me a little bit about the overview and the mystery of this Harbinger. Yeah, the Harbinger is, as, as you shared, it's the ancient mystery that holds the key, the secret to America's future. It, it lies behind everything from 9-11, from the, to the war on terror, to the economic collapse, to the Great Recession, to the crashes of Wall Street. And it's so specific that it even foretells the actions of American leaders, the words of American leaders, um, even the dates, the and down to the hours of, the, of things like the crashes of Wall Street. It involves ancient scrolls and prophecies, even ceremonies. Um, it, it even involves the highest people of the land, and it affects everybody from our future bank account. I mean, I mean everything. And they are warnings. They are harbinger. These are omens or harbingers of warning concerning judgment or concerning destruction. When were these ancient mysteries uh, written down? Well, the key is from the Oracle of Isaiah, which is in uh, which is in uh, you know the eighth century BC. And okay. you know the key, yeah. They, and the key there is that that in the last days of ancient Israel, uh, before it was destroyed, there were nine omens, harbingers or omens, um, that began appearing in the land. And the thing is that the same nine harbingers are now reappearing on American soil with uh, specific fulfillment. Uh, and again, some have appeared in New York City, some have appeared in Washington, D.C., some have, have come in the form of objects, some as events or replaying, and again, as I said, some even go to the highest, the, to the President of the United States. And hey John, before we get into awesome. the omens, Mm -hmm. How did you discover them? Well, I was, I was, you know, I, I, we live near, you know, New York City, and, the whole, and I was standing at the corner of Ground Zero, and my my focus was drawn to a particular object. I was drawn to this thing, and and it was just something was leading me to just just go with it, see what's behind it, and one it became the first puzzle piece in this mystery or this ancient mystery that just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I didn't even know where it was going to lead before before I got there, but it just kept it just kept becoming more and more mind boggling. What? What's the significance of the nine omens? Well, these are the, you know, these are the warnings. Each one is a prophetic sign okay. or, a, or, a, or a prophetic uh, omen that gives a warning of a nation that is in danger, um, and really it's a wake-up call, but in danger of really destruction. And these things, uh, well, this is what happened. I mean, Israel, in its last days, uh, uh, 
the, the first thing that happened was, and the first warning, and this is a pattern uh, in, in the downfall of nations, it's a, pattern, it's a biblical pattern uh, as well, and that is that the first, the first sign is this thing called the breach, or the first harbinger being the breach, and that is that the, the nation's hedge of protection is removed or is lifted, and it's a temporary thing, but uh, an enemy is allowed to make a strike on that land, and that happened in, with ancient Israel in 732 B.C., when did this attack happen? And it was temporary, and it, it, it was a traumatic thing. It was a wake-up call, because Israel had been a nation that, that had gone so far into immorality and that there was, they weren't listening to anything. So finally this thing happens, and then comes this period, this kind of, it's a grace period. It, it looks like things are, are safe, but there's this period of years where it's really the nation's hanging in the balance. It's either going to, it's either going to, come back or it's going to keep on its course of descent and with Israel that's what happened they were destroyed and it's in this period after this breach after this attack that the, the harbingers come and now we're, now what does that have to do with America well America is now the nation and America is, is uh, now the nation in danger and the first sign is this it would have to appear as this breach this temporary removal of the nation's center protection and a strike made to the land temporary and this happens on September September 11, 2001, okay. when for the first time this hedge of protection is removed, an enemy makes a strike, this is a wake-up call to, you know, in America, um, and at the time, you know, it seems like there's going to be a spiritual revival for a, for a few weeks. For a while, at least, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't, and so now, but, but the thing is that Israel didn't, never came back and it was destroyed. The, the, the scary thing is that America is following the exact same path. So different civilizations, Jonathan, have gone through these nine omens separately. You're saying? Well, I, there, well, there is the pattern of the breach has happened more than once, and yes, the pattern of the or the exact nine harbingers is very specific and and right and very specific to what happened in ancient Israel and then what's happening in America. I mean, extremely specific. Okay. It's not just an overall pattern. Must all nine omens be met before? The the end comes well the nine omens have already have, are already have appeared they're already here oh that's they great oh, crap. yeah okay that's let's go through so the first is the breach you you you, you say it was yeah. 9-11 yeah what about yeah. the other ones yeah now yeah i mean there's so much you can just probably touch on some and there's more that with the harvard just goes so i'll just touch on some and see how it goes okay uh, the yeah the first the here's one after the attack in, in ancient israel what they do and actually oh actually the key is this this you mentioned this is this oracle of isaiah and what he says is he records that the people in ancient israel they make this vow and this vow is recorded in isaiah 9 and, and what he says is the people say the bricks have fallen down in this attack, but we will rebuild with hewn stone. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will plant cedars in their place. And this becomes the decoder because what they're saying is, hey, we're not we're not going to turn back. We're not we're just going to get hard. We're going to defy uh, this whole thing. We're going to come back stronger than ever and continue on in our course of really immorality. So what happens is this is the key and uh, the harbinger. So they, the, here's one: they say we're going to rebuild with hewn stone. In other words, they're saying we're going to rebuild stronger than ever. An ancient manuscript uh, in the Sept it's called the Septuagint um, says this. It renders the, it this way. It says they say the bricks have fallen, but we're come. Let us build a tower. So this harbinger, I think in the book, in the harbinger, it's the fourth harbinger, is that they build this tower where the where the destruction had happened, and this tower becomes a symbol of defiance. And they say we're gonna. It's a symbol. We're gonna come back stronger. We're gonna build it higher than before. In this whole thing. Well, the thing manifests after after 9/11. There, all the something appears at ground zero, and that is the tower. The fourth harbinger is the tower. They say, we're going to build this tower, and we're going to build it. It's going to be higher than before and bigger than before, and they vowed these, you know, vows of defiance over it. It's called the Freedom Tower. Right now, it's called the Tower. It's still rising right now, but that is that is the exact thing that Israel did. And then it goes, if you go down the, the actually, the, the, uh, the um, oracle, it goes one after the other. It says, the bricks have fallen, we're going to rebuild. Then it says, the sycamores have been cut down. So here, the sixth harbinger, or omen, here, is that, that they say, you know, when this attack came to ancient Israel, the sycamores of the land were struck down. And this is actually an ancient biblical sign of national judgment, of being uprooted. He's saying, if you don't come back, you're going to be uprooted. Well, what could this have to do with America? That for the sixth harbinger to appear, this would have to, somehow, 
9-11 would have to be linked to the striking down of the sycamore in some way, the sign manifests. Well, the eerie thing is, in the last moments of 9-11, the last tower is coming down, and it sends forth a beam into the air. It goes across, and it, it strikes an object. The object happens to be there at the corner of ground zero. It happens to be a tree. The tree happens to be the sycamore, sycamore tree. It happens to be growing there. It gets struck down. They make it, the people of New York make it into a symbol. They put it on display, um, and they, they call it the sycamore of ground zero, and they, they think it's a great sign. They're actually reenacting a an ancient, the ancient sign of judgment or, or of destruction. There's another one called the, the sign of the stone, or the, then that is, it says in the, in Isaiah's oracle, it says, it says, we will rebuild with hewn stone. And the, in the ancient original language, it's, it's gazit stone. That means it's specifically this omen is a cut, it means a cut, quarried out stone. And it was a symbol that we're coming back stronger than we were before. And so what the people of ancient Israel do is they take this, they quarry out this stone, this massive rectangular block of stone. They bring it back to the ground of destruction where the bricks have fallen. And they lay it in place and this, and they kind of vow vows of defiance over it. Well, what does that do with America? After 9-11, at a mountain up in upstate New York, they, the people quarry out a massive rectangular block of stone. It's, a, it's an ancient or biblical gazit stone. They bring it back, they bring it to New York City, bring it to ground zero. They lower it onto the pavement where the bricks have fallen. They have a ceremony around the stone. They have leaders of New York, New Jersey, the governor, the mayor, and they they literally have a ceremony. They vow vows of defiance over the stone, and they say this stone is going to be the beginning of our comeback stronger than ever. They don't realize that they're reenacting the ancient drama, and everything that ha everything they do, nobody knows, nobody's trying to do it. It's just happening. It's just happening, yeah. Yeah, it's replaying it. I mean, eerily, I mean, it's going to get... get well, you know, they say, they say, uh, Jonathan, history repeats itself. Yeah, yeah, and yes, and, and sometimes, and here, on really uncanny, and the other thing, if you go, you, it's like you can go right down, George, you can go right down this, this scroll of Isaiah, the next thing it says, it says, but the sycamores have been struck down, but we will plant cedars in their place. So the next, the next harbinger, or the seventh harbinger, the sign of, you read in English, cedar, and what, what they did is they clear, the, the ancient Israelites, they clear away the sycamore tree, they, they take a stronger tree, the cedar, and they, and they plant it exactly where the, the sycamore had, Stood saying, you know, hey, we're, again, same same message. We're coming back stronger than ever, and we're and we're going to continue down our course. So so they do this as an act of defiance. So what could this have to do with with America? Well, a, an eerie thing happens. First of all, the word in Hebrew there is not cedar because you know they didn't speak English, but it's the word is the word erez or erez tree, and that you're going to need to tune back in to hear the rest of that because. Uh... YouTube doesn't let me uh, load up more than a couple of 12, 13 minutes. So hopefully uh, we'll find out exactly how much because I pushed the other one to like 14 minutes. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all that one in. But um, this one should all get in because we're 13 and change. Anyway, uh, breathe, eat, drink, say, do, think. Everybody waiting out of the water. Uh, get out there. Move around. Do some things. I mean, I know that, you know, my older nephews are out there and they're playing, you know, uh, sports, wrestling and whatnot and uh, doing everything that you should be doing. Uh, sometimes a little too much and busting your knees because you gotta work your whole life on those knees. So try to take it a little easy on those things, okay? Uh, you don't have to kill yourself, but you should be active. Hopefully you guys are getting that. All right, um, I love you. Hunter gatherer for life, yo, top of the pyramid, cause that's where we're at. Uh, it's almost a year since uh, this ninth step began. The last step, we are almost at the uh, 2012 peak of it. So, uh, live, love, laugh, living now. L I V I N O W S. Yeah.